Hello. I hope you've had a great day today. My name is Big Voice Jay, and this is Big Voice Jay's Bedtime Stories, the show where we get you ready for a great night's sleep by reading familiar stories set to relaxing music. Links to tonight's stories can be found in the show notes at bedtimewithbvj.com. Tonight's story, The Tale of Timmy Tiptoes by Beatrix Potter. Once upon a time, there was a little, fat, comfortable gray squirrel called Timmy Tiptoes. He had a nest thatched with leaves in the top of a tall tree, and he had a little squirrel wife called Goody. Timmy Tiptoes sat out, enjoying the breeze. He whisked his tail and chuckled. Little wife Goody, the nuts are ripe. We must lay up a store for winter and spring. Goody Tiptoes was busy pushing moss onto the thatch. The nest is so snug, we shall be sound asleep all winter. Then we shall wake up all the thinner, when there is nothing to eat in spring fine. Then we shall wake up all the thinner, when there is nothing to eat in springtime, replied prudent Timmy. When Timmy and Goody Tiptoes came to the nut thicket, they found other squirrels were there already. Timmy took off his jacket and hung it on a twig. They worked away quietly by themselves. Every day they made several journeys and picked quantities of nuts. They carried them away in bags and stored them in several hollow stumps near the tree where they had built their nest. When these stumps were full, they began to empty the bags into a hole high up a tree that had belonged to a woodpecker. The nuts rattled down, down, down inside. How shall you ever get them out again? It is like a money box, said Goody. I shall be much thinner before springtime, my love, said Timmy Tiptoes, peeping into the hole. They did collect quantities because they did not lose them. Squirrels who bury their nuts in the ground lose more than half because they cannot remember the place. The most forgetful squirrel in the world was called Silvertail. He began to dig and he could not remember. And then he dug again and found some nuts that had not belonged to him. And there was a fight. And other squirrels began to dig. The whole wood was in commotion. Unfortunately, just at this time, a flock of little birds flew by from the bush, searching for green caterpillars and spiders. There were several sorts of little birds twittering different songs. The first one sang, Who's been digging up my nuts? Who's been digging up my nuts? And another sang, Little bit of bread and no cheese. Little bit of bread and no cheese. The squirrels followed and listened. The first little bird flew into the bush where Timmy and Goody Tiptoes were quietly tying up their bags. And it sang, Who's been digging up my nuts? Who's been digging up my nuts? Timmy Tiptoes went on with his work without replying. Indeed, the little bird did not expect an answer. It was only singing its natural song and it meant nothing at all. But when the other squirrels heard that song, they rushed upon Timmy Tiptoes and cuffed and scratched him and upset his bag of nuts. The innocent little bird, which had caused all the mischief, flew away in a fright. Timmy rolled over and over and then turned tail and fled towards his nest, followed by a crowd of squirrels shouting, Who's been digging up my nuts? They caught him and dragged him up the very same tree, where there was a little round hole and they pushed him in. The hole was much too small for Timmy Tiptoes' figure. They squeezed him dreadfully. It was a wonder they did not... They squeezed him dreadfully. It was a wonder they did not break his ribs. We will leave him here till he confesses, said Silvertail Squirrel, and he shouted into the hole, Who's been digging up my nuts? Timmy Tiptoes made no reply. He had tumbled down inside the tree upon half a pack of nuts belonging to himself. He lay quite stunned and still. Goody Tiptoes picked up the nut bags and went home. Goody Tiptoes passed a lonely and unhappy sight. Goody Tiptoes passed a lonely... 
Goody Tiptoes passed a lonely and unhappy night. Next morning, she ventured back to the nut bushes to look for him, but the other unkind squirrels drove her away. She wandered all over the wood, calling, Timmy Tiptoes! Timmy Tiptoes! Oh, where is Timmy Tiptoes? In the meantime, Timmy Tiptoes came to his senses. He found himself tucked up in a little moss bed, very much in the dark, feeling sore. It seemed to be underground. Timmy coughed and groaned because his ribs hurted him. There was a chirpy noise, and a small striped chipmunk appeared with a nightlight and hoped he felt better. It was most kind to Timmy Tiptoes. It lent him its nightcap, and the house was full of provisions. The chipmunk explained that it had rained nuts through the top of the tree. Besides, I found a few buried. It laughed and chuckled when it heard Timmy's story. While Timmy was confined to bed, it ticed him to eat quantities. But how shall I ever get out through that hole unless I'm thin myself? My wife will be anxious. Oh, just another nut or two. Let me crack them for you, said the chipmunk. Timmy tiptoes grew fatter and fatter. Now Goody Tiptoes had set to work again by herself. She did not put any more nuts into the woodpecker's hole, because she had always doubted how they could get out again. She hid them under a tree root. They rattled down, down. Once, when Goody emptied an extra big bag full, there was a decided squeak. There was a decided... <clears throat> Once, when Goody emptied an extra big bag full, there was a decided squeak, and next time Goody brought another bag full, a little striped chipmunk scrambled out in a hurry. It is getting perfectly full up downstairs. The sitting room is full, and they are rolling along the passage, and my husband, Chippy Hockey, has run away and left me. What is the explanation of these showers of nuts? I am sure I beg your pardon. I did not know that anybody lived here, said Mrs. Goody Tiptoes. But... Where is Chippy Hockey? My husband, Timmy Tiptoes, has run away too. I know where Chippy is, a little bird told me, said Mrs. Chippy Hockey. She led the way to the woodpecker's tree, and they listened at the hall. Down below there was a noise of nutcrackers, and a fat squirrel voice and a thin squirrel voice were singing together. My little old man and I fell out. How shall we bring this matter about? Bring it about as well as you can and get you going, you little old man. You could squeeze in through that round hole, said Goody Tiptoes. Yes, I could, said the chipmunk, but my husband, Chippy Hockey, bites. Down below there was a noise of cracking nuts and nibbling. And then the fat squirrel voice and the thin squirrel voice sang. For the diddyum day, say diddy dum dee, day double diddle dum day. Then Goody peeped in at the hole and called down, Timmy Tiptoes, oh fie, Timmy Tiptoes! And Tommy reply, and Timmy replied, Is that you, Goody Tiptoes? Why, certainly. He came up and kissed Goody through the hole, but he was so fat that he could not get out. Chippy Hockey was not too fat, but he did not want to come. He stayed down below and chuckled. And so it went on for a fortnight till a big wind blew off the top of the tree and opened up the hole and let in the rain. Then Timmy Tiptoes came out and went home with an umbrella. But Chippy Hockey continued to camp out for another week, although it was uncomfortable. At that, a large bear came walking through the wood. Perhaps he was also looking for nuts. He seemed to be sniffing around. Chippy Hockey went home in a hurry, and when Chippy Hockey got home, he found he had caught a cold in his head, and he was more uncomfortable still. And now Timmy and Goody Tiptoes keep their nut store fastened up with a little padlock. And whenever that little bird sees the chipmunks, he sings, Who's been digging up my nuts? Who's been digging up my nuts? But nobody ever answers. If you've been digging up nuts and you want to keep them secure, you want Simply Safe. 
What a great little system. You can check it on your phone. Enter the code BVJ in the promo area, and it will do absolutely nothing, because this is not sponsored. You can, however, tell your friends to secure their own nuts and listen to the podcast. Share it with everybody. Our next story, The Three Billy Goats Gruff. Once upon a time, three billy goats lived together in a field on a hillside. They were the three billy goats gruff. There was a big billy goat gruff, a middle billy goat gruff, and a little billy goat gruff. Beside the billy goat's field ran a river. One day they decided to cross it and eat the grass on the other side. But first they had to go over the bridge. And under the bridge lived a big ugly troll. First little billy goat gruff stepped onto the bridge. Trip, trap went his hooves. Who's that tripping over my bridge? roared the troll. It is only I, little billy goat gruff, going across the river to make myself fat, said little billy goat gruff in such a small voice. Now I'm coming to gobble you up, said the troll. Oh, please don't eat me, I'm so small, said little billy goat gruff. Oh, wait for the next billy goat, he's much bigger. Well, be off with you, said the troll. A little while later, middle billy goat gruff stepped onto the bridge. Trip, trap, trip, trap, went his hooves. Who's that tripping over my bridge? roared the troll. Why, it is only I, middle billy goat gruff, going across the river to make myself fat, said middle billy goat gruff, whose voice was not as small. Now I'm coming to gobble you up, said the troll. Oh, no, don't eat me, said middle billy goat gruff. Wait for the next billy goat. He's the biggest of all. Very well. Be off with you, said the troll. It wasn't long before big billy goat gruff stepped onto the bridge. Trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap, went his hooves. And the bridge groaned under his weight. Who's that tramping over my bridge? roared the troll. It is I, Big Billy Goat Gruff, said Big Billy Goat Gruff, who had a rough roaring voice of his own. Now I'm coming to gobble you up, said the troll, and at once he jumped onto the bridge very mean and hungry. But Big Billy Goat Gruff was very tough and strong. He put down his head and charged the troll, and butted him so hard he flew high into the air, and then fell down and splashed into the middle of the river. And the great ugly troll was never seen again. Then Big Billy Goat Gruff joined Middle Billy Goat Gruff and Little Billy Goat Gruff in the field on the far side of the river. There they got so fat that they could hardly walk home again. The End You know you're not you when you're hungry. You can get angry, crazy. You're just not you. So, eat a Snickers. Enter BBJ in the product code, and it'll do absolutely nothing, because that's not real. But Snickers are real, and they are tasty. I'm going to eat one right now. Our final story, The Tale of the Flopsy Bunnies, by Beatrix Potter. It is said that the effect of eating too much lettuce is soporific. I have never felt sleepy after eating lettuces, but then I am not a rabbit. They certainly had a very soporific effect upon the flop. They certainly had a very soporific effect upon the Flopsy Bunnies. When Benjamin Bunny grew up, he married his cousin Flopsy. They had a large family and they were very improvident and cheerful. I do not remember the separate names of their children. They were generally called the Flopsy Bunnies. As they were not always quite enough to eat, Benjamin used to borrow cabbages from Flopsy's brother, Peter Rabbit, who kept a nursery garden. Sometimes, Peter Rabbit had no cabbages to spare. When this happened, the Flopsy Bunnies went across the field to a rubbish heap in the ditch outside Mr. McGregor's garden. Mr. McGregor's rubbish heap was a mixture. 
There were jam pots and paper bags and mountains of chopped grass from the mowing machine, which always tasted oily, and some rotten vegetable marrows and an old boot or two. One day, oh joy, there was a quantity of overgrown lettuces, which had shot into flour. The Flopsy Bunnies simply stuffed lettuces. By degrees, one after another, they were overcome with slumber and lay down in the moan. Benjamin was not so much overcome as his children. Before going to sleep, he was sufficiently wide awake to put a paper bag over his head to keep off the flies. The little Flopsy Bunny slept delightfully in the warm sun. From the lawn beyond the garden came the distant cuckety sound of the mowing machine. The blue bottles buzzed about the wall, and a little old mouse picked over the rubbish among the jam pots. I can tell you her name. She was called Thomasina Tittlemouse, a wood mouse with a long tail. She rustled across the paper bag and awakened Benjamin Bunny. The mouse apologized profusely and said that she knew Peter Rabbit. While she and Benjamin were talking close under the wall, they heard a heavy tread above their heads, and suddenly Mr. McGregor emptied out a sack full of lawn mowings right upon the top of the sleeping Flopsy Bunnies. Benjamin shrank down under his paper bag. The mouse hid in a jam pot. The little rabbits smiled sweetly in their sleep under the shower of grass, they did not awake because the lettuce had been so soporific. They dreamt that their mother Flopsy was tucking them up in a hay bed. Mr. McGregor looked down after emptying his sack. He saw some funny little brown tips of ears sticking up through the lawn mowings. He stared at them for some time. Presently, a fly settled on one of them and it moved. Mr. McGregor climbed down onto the rubbish heap. One, two, three, four, five, six little rabbits, said he, as he dropped them into his sack. The Flopsy Bunnies dreamt that their mother was turning them over in bed. They stirred a little in their sleep, but they did not wake up. Mr. D- M- Mr. McGregor tied up the sack and left it on the wall. He went to put away the mowing machine. While he was gone, Mrs. Flopsy Bunny, who were a... Uh, who remained at home, came across the field. Came across the field. She looked suspiciously at the sack and wondered where everybody was. Then the mouse came out of her jam pot and Benjamin took the paper bag off his head and they told the doleful tale. Benjamin and Flopsy were in despair. They could not undo the string. But Mrs. Tittlemouse was a resourceful person. She nibbled a hole in the bottom corner of the sack. The little rabbits were pulled out and pinched to wake them. Their parents stuffed the empty sack with three rotten vegetable marrows, an old blacking brush, and two decayed turnips. Then they all hid under a bush and watched for Mr. McGregor. Mr. McGregor came back and picked up the sack and carried it off. He carried it hanging down as if it were rather heavy. The Flopsy Bunnies followed at a safe distance. They watched him go into his house, and then they crept up to the window to listen. Mr. McGregor threw down the sack on the stone floor in a way that would have been extremely painful to the Flopsy Bunnies if they had happened to have been inside it. They could hear him drag his chair on the flags and chuckle. One, two, three, four, five, six little rabbits, said Mr. McGregor. Eh? What's that? What have they been spoiling now? inquired Mrs. McGregor. One, two, three, four, five, six little fat rabbits, repeated Mr. McGregor. Repeated Mr. McGregor, counting on his finger. One, two, three, don't you be silly. What do you mean, you silly old man, in the sack? One, two, three, four, five, six, replied Mr. McGregor. The youngest Flopsy Bunny got upon the windowsill. Mrs. McGregor took hold of the sack and felt it. She said she could feel six, but they must be old rabbits, because they were so hard in all different shapes. Not fit to eat, but the skins will do fine to line my old cloak. 
Grind your old cloak, shouted Mr. McGregor. I shall sell them and buy myself becky. Rabbit tobacco? I shall skin them and cut off their heads. Mrs. McGregor untied the sack and put her hand inside. When she felt the vegetables, she became very, very angry. She said that Mr. McGregor had done it a purpose. Mr. McGregor was very angry, too. One of the rotten marrows came flying through the kitchen window and hit the youngest Flopsy Bunny. It was rather hurt. Then Benjamin and Flopsy thought it a good time to go home. So Mr. McGregor did not get his tobacco. And Mrs. McGregor did not get her rabbit skins. But next Christmas... Thomasina Tittlemouse got a present of enough rabbit wool to make herself a clock and a hood, and a handsome muff and a pair of warm mittens. So what do we learn from this story, if anything? Why, if anything, we learned that all you can eat restaurants will be the death of us all. You won't be able to walk around, you'll get all sleepy. And then you'll find yourself in a sack. Then who'll come and get you? Who? Who? Although I do love a good buffet every now and then. But you gotta be careful. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Think about that as you drift off to sleep tonight. What's your favorite buffet? Well, I know of a couple I could go to right now, but I won't speak of it. It's bedtime. Let me remind you that if you have a story you'd like read, please email me, bigvoicej at gmail.com. Remember to play the latest episode on your smart speaker. Just say, hey, play BVJ's Bedtime Stories. Thank you so much for listening. Good night. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>